So our next speaker is Mark Gimmel, and he's going to tell us some amazing stuff. <clears throat> okay. Hi, everybody. Um, let me see. I'm kind of short on time, and I do want to tell you a lot of things, so I'll cut it fairly short, and then uh, if there's people interested afterwards, we can sit here and talk, okay? Right, so I'm here to talk about something which, uh, curse you, DMC, really is happening to me, uh, much to my surprise. Um, so... We've, I've been coming to TMC for, since it started, when it was uh, Tesla, Tesla Live, and there was a lady who spoke there, uh, Liani Munter. Was anyone here at that? Yeah. Now, Liani was incredibly inspirational, and I didn't realize the kind of impact she was going to have on me. She uh, defends her activity in NASCAR and such races, Indy 500, saying, well, um, she's got a lot to say about electric cars and the future and renewable energy, uh, but we all have already drunk the Kool-Aid. We're already on board, and we, we believe it. And listening to the talks today, we're all nodding and agreeing. There is a huge amount of people who are just not with the plan. Uh, we're selling a lot of Teslas, for instance, but it's a drop in the ocean compared to the number of cars that are uh, sold in the world. So however comfortable we are with the message here, I'm afraid uh, there's an awful lot of people that are not hearing that message. And what happened last year was I started to have this idea about uh, racing Teslas on the circuit. And it seems like a tremendous triviality to race cars on a circuit until you realize that, in fact, uh, racing is uh, the inspiration for a huge number of young people and for people who just uh, want to know what technology can do. So we came up with this idea. We started to um, uh, pursue it. And I'm shocked to say I find myself now the CEO of Electric GT Holdings. and. Uh, all of my money's in this business, and uh, all my wife's money's in the business, and a lot of my friends, so we better make this work. Right, so quickly, what is it? Elevator pitch. We're setting up a global race championship for GT-class cars. So those are fast, powerful, good to look at cars on the best circuits in the world. Uh, the reason we're doing this is no one else is doing it. And I'm really surprised to say that because you would just think it's such an obvious idea. You produce a car so good, Surely, people just want to race these things, but I'm afraid they don't. And I've found out why they don't uh, as I got into the motor industry. Now, um, I'm going to answer a few questions that I've put up that I often get asked. Uh, and the first thing is, who am I? So, I'm a guy from the software world. I've started a few businesses, and I had the good fortune to sell them reasonably well, so I was able to buy some cars. Not nearly as successful as many of you guys, but uh, good enough. So, uh, that's fine. I'm not, nothing to do with motorsport, so how do I find myself in this uh, situation? Well, I got to know other people who do know what they're doing. And this particular person uh, is key. Agustin is a Spanish guy who has had this crazy idea, amongst other things, to design, build, and race the first and only electric car in the Dakar Rally. Uh, that's tricky, OK? That's a very hard test. Uh, they're racing 300, 400 kilometers in a stage. Uh, 50 centigrade, that's 110 Fahrenheit, something like that. I'm looking at folks who might know. Uh, so that car was hard to design, hard to make run, and he had to design all the logistics as well to get the battery charging and battery swaps. So this is the guy I'm setting this up with. On, on the way to doing this, we've attracted a lot of other people who know what they're doing in this business. So I'm pleased to say we've got a, about 10, 12 person team making this happen. And how the heck did this happen? Well, really, uh, we went to see the e prix in Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo, the Formula E race which is a fantastic spectacle, but unfortunately, I was rather deceived by the cars. I think they are not a good uh, example of what electric cars can do. Uh, I'm so pleased to hear uh, folks talking about how to break people's ideas and come up with technology that can show people that the impossible is possible. Um, I'm afraid Formula E, for me, is not doing that yet. I don't like to see them switching cars. I don't like them seeing, see them limited to 80, 90 miles an hour in the circuit. Uh, I think it's just not the best they can do. And in fact, I do know that if we take our Model S and we take it to the same circuit, we would beat them. So what does that tell you about them? Uh, so also then we went to speak to FIA. They're the guys who rule the world level, the motorsport. And they said, well, why don't you just build your own car? And I said, are you guys crazy? I mean, Tesla is building 100,000 of these cars. They know what they're doing. Could I seriously think I could do better than them? And why would I want to do that? So. We just uh, went, despite their advice, we went uh, with this idea. We've spoken to folks in Tesla, and we find ourselves here today. Now, I'm based in Spain, despite my Scottish accent, and that might be a strange place to set this kind of thing up, but 
Um, I can tell you that in Spain, uh, there are a few things going on you may not know. First of all, it's kind of the world capital for soccer, so there's a lot of sporting heritage. Uh, also, buddies, my buddy like uh, Agustin, he's done the Dakar Rally with an electric car, which in itself is a commendable effort. You may not know that MotoGP is based in the same city I'm based in, which is Madrid. Um, MotoGP is one of these world championships for motorbikes. Um, and then uh, Formula E was started by Alejandro Agag and Enrique Banuelos. They're both from Spain. Alejandro lives quite near to where I, I live. So Spain seems to be a, a, a happening place for sport, and uh, why not start there? Now, this is a key question, and I've heard this from someone you may know, uh, Elon Musk. Right? <laughs> Motorsport is just marketing. Now, that might superficially seem to be the case when you look at something like NASCAR. But let's go back to the origins of motorsport, okay? Motorsport was out to show people what technology could do. It was out to inspire folks who maybe cannot buy these vehicles or don't know what they're capable of doing, and that, let's face it, is most of the people in the world. And so uh, back in the early days of motorsport, people would take their very expensive cars. I mean, we're looking at a photograph here where most of the folks looking at the car are walking on farms. They've got no hope of even buying like one of the tires for that car. Uh, and yet these people are watching something and saying, wow, something crazy is happening in the, in the world of transport. We're back to that stage again. And if no one takes electric cars, like we're doing, to the circuit, the public's not going to see what we can do. It's no good coming to these small conferences and agreeing with ourselves. We need to do what Liani says. We need to get out to where the people don't believe what we're doing and show them. So that's what we're trying to do with Electric GT. And in that process, there are great opportunities for businesses. Uh, many brands that we now know and think of as like uh, they've been around forever grew up in motorsport and, uh, and changed the world for a lot of people. This particular brand, Ferrari, many people don't have the luxury to be able to buy that vehicle, but they saw it on the racetrack and they were inspired by that and it represents for many an aspirational goal which gets them out of bed in the morning and makes them go to work. That's what we've got to do with the electric car and with other things that we can do. Right, so indeed, you could say that motorsport is a marketing opportunity, but it's a marketing opportunity for brands that are willing to make things change. And that, I think, is the case that we're going to see in the next few years. You're going to see brands making cars like Samsung, Xiaomi, Next TV, Foxconn, and they're going to shake up the motor industry in ways that will surprise everybody. And so what we're building is a forum where these manufacturers can bring their Tesla killers, and they can show us if they really can't kill Tesla. How does the Tesla industry feel about this? So this is a very interesting question because we see a tremendous uh, um, schizophrenia in the industry. I've been in, invited to Formula One race in, in Barcelona. The uh, guys we were speaking to in DHL publicly obviously love Formula One, but privately are saying to us, this thing is going to die soon because young folks just are not interested. They're not going. And if young folks aren't getting inspired by it, it's, it frankly doesn't have a future. Uh, I think it's our, our duty to get young folks interested in what electric cars can do and show them the races. So I could go into great depth. This I will tell you about how to set up a championship if you want later on if you come down and speak to me here because we don't want to run too late, okay? Uh, the races are not regular races. First of all, we're getting a lot of interest. We did a press release like uh, three months ago that got a, a tremendous amount of pickup. But around about 42 million read, uh, people read that uh, press release and there was a lot of tech websites that ran it, so it's clearly not just your average motorsport. And in fact, what we're planning to do is something that should reach many people, and there's one very good reason why we're going to do that. We're going to stream this event from beginning to end, all the cars, live stream, streamed for free over the net. And that means that anyone in the world, and I'm talking about people not in this room, who can not go to the race, can watch it on their smartphone, and they can say, well, I'm a Brazilian, I want to see the Brazilian driver from beginning to end, I want to hear him talk to me because these cars are not making a lot of noise, and uh, and I could tell you some other things we're going to do maybe later on. Now, I'm telling you some things that have not been published, okay? And there are a few other things I'm going to say right at the end, which are brand new and you're going to see for the first time here today. This is actually one of the things. Uh, we are, who knows the past of the history of humanity? Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age. It's a pretty evident case that we're moving into the Light Age, thanks to, obviously, Solar City, Elon Musk and the likes. Um, this, I think, is a very important message to provide to the public. These are not just cars racing around a circuit for no reason. What sustainable message can you give to a car just going around and ending up where it started? What we can say is all the energy these cars are using is coming from um, renewable sources. And when we get to that society where all our energy is coming from the sun, we can essentially allow ourselves to do such crazy things as race cars. Okay? 
Otherwise, it's really hard to win that argument. Okay, well, I could go into details here about how we're connecting up the cars so we can do streaming. I won't go into that at the moment because we are quite tight. But we're certainly aiming to stream to all the big streaming platforms. I think that's a very key thing to make this motorsport reach the biggest public possible. Uh, we also have uh, early stages of agreements with the big uh, TV transmitters around the world because uh, you obviously got to go to the way the media is, but the fact is most of the young folks in the world are cord cutters or cord nivers, so you got to go straight to where they, they consume content, which is online. And these races are not just a race, they are in fact a, uh, a forum for people to talk about where the energy comes from, that's generation, how they're storing it at home, and how they're using it in the transport and how they charge the cars. So it's our, our absolute objective to turn these events into a uh, full tech showcase and a uh, conference. Um, those of you who may have seen uh, Goodwood Speed, uh, Festival of Speed a few weeks ago in the UK, Tesla had what seems to me to be their best uh, exhibition uh, space there. They had this uh, big booth. Uh, I'm hoping to see that kind of thing in our events. So, are these races only for Teslas? Well, certainly not. I do hope, as I think Elon Musk has said, that many manufacturers produce GT-class electric cars and they come and they show us how good they are. That's precisely what we have to do. We have to start a whole new industry and show the world what we're getting on with. Now, uh, we are racing in top Formula One race uh, circuits. Pleased to say these circuits love what we're doing. They're rather frustrated with Formula E because Formula E are not going to the circuits. There's no other electric race series happening anywhere. So we are the first there, and we're very happy to go. Circuit like Nürburgring, the CEO is super excited. We get to use the circuits for free. They're asking us to come around and show the car early. Um, and I know as well, we're also getting invited to some North American circuits. If any of you are interested in helping us out there, we'd really like to see that happen soon. Certainly next year, we aim to start in the first half, and we should be in the US by the end of 2017. And all this is coming from a software guy who's got no idea about motorsport, okay? So I'm really picking this up as we go along. So how do we prepare the car? And this is the key thing. Well, you've got to make it full carbon fiber because you want it to be as light as possible. And I can tell you we've taken off over half a ton from the car. Uh, it's got to be fully FIA secure. That means a full uh, roll cage, uh, automatic extinguisher, current leakage, uh, external and internal uh, power cutoff, and several other things. Um, it also has to be uh, race ready, that means it's got to have slicks, we've got to have adjustable suspension, all these things we've done. And then uh, we're trying to get it extra cool, and you might see in this, this diagram some uh, cooling uh, exits on the top of the, of the frunk, because that frunk is empty and we can really use that thing. Making a great car even greater. Well, we're doing this in Barcelona, so this is just a quick uh, simulation, shall we say. I am going to show you something that's a little bit realer in a minute, but the car is in a, a shop in, in Barcelona, and it has been built. So you should see a few things here uh, about the way the car's been changed. Obviously, the air exits on the, on the front. Um, it is full carbon fiber, but it looks just like a regular Model S. Now, uh, I would like to show you a, a model, but I've, I haven't got enough time, so I'm just going to skip on to something which no one else has seen anywhere. The real car. This has been tested yesterday in Barcelona on the Formula One circuit. Easy with those photographs. <laughs> right. So thank you, thank you very much. Uh, it's my best friend's money and my money and my wife's money making this happen. So, <laughs> so I hope it works out. It's a really nice car. Everyone's been really blown away. We've had Formula One drivers looking at the car. <clears throat> so it's raising a lot of expectations. Got some pretty wide rubber in the back there. Um, so we've also got another thing I can announce right now, and you might just see this at the front of the car, or maybe at the back. Pirelli is our first global sponsor. And I really appreciate that because we are speaking with top class Formula One sponsors because they know that the future of motorsport is electric. So that's our objective. We've got to make that thing happen. Now, I just want to go into a quick technical thing. Temperature control. Who knows that the car heats up in the circuit? Come on, some of you have taken it there, right? Okay, well, we are speaking to some engineers in Tesla. We also have uh, possibly read the CAN bus, thanks to some very smart people in, uh, in TMC. Um, and we know why it's heating up. We know the things we can do. We're going to solve that problem. This car's going to really knock people's socks off. So what's next? Well, we're obviously closing sponsorship. If any of you guys have got any influence in any business that would like to see their brand in this world-changing uh, motorsport event, please talk to me. You've got my email address there. You can follow us online. We're, we're tweeting a lot of the things we're doing to the, to the car. We're signing teams and drivers. If you've got any interest in taking part in any way, please do get in touch, because we've got to make this happen. I have to say, 
all of us in this room do have a responsibility. We are directly in touch with something really big that's happening in the world and changing to electric cars. And it's our responsibility to act. I kind of got picked by this idea to make it happen. I'm a software guy. But we've got to make it happen. It's my responsibility because no one else is doing this in the world. If we make it happen, we'll change people's lives. If we don't, it's not going to happen. So please help us. And that is it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. That was great. Uh, I, I have one question. Uh, so where is the uh, Tesla Motors Club logo going to go? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we could uh, talk about how much it's going to cost you. OK, right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>